it has finally happened. Something that I have waited for for 40 years, 40 years, ever since I was 10 years old. The solar energy singularity is finally imminent and upon us. This was also the very first video that I ever did on this channel, which you can see in this tag in this upper right hand corner here. Since it was the very first video, the production quality is terrible, of course. That is why it is an unlisted video rather than a publicly viewable video. But for those interested in the very first video of this channel, you can see that and compare my production quality then versus now. This is the price of a photovoltaic module per watt, 1975 to present. This is a fall of about 99%. The price is about one one hundredth of what it was in 1975. This is a very, very rapid exponential fall, very analogous to Moore's law in certain ways. There is another law called Swanson's law that covers this, which you can learn about in this video up here in the upper right hand corner, although that is an episode of the Data University series, so it is not a standalone curated video, but rather a module within that chain. But nonetheless, 99% fall in photovoltaic prices. But what has happened more recently is finally what gets this to the critical threshold of extremely fast expansion. This red box that I've put over here is just the last 11 years or so expanded into this chart over here. Just from 2012 to present, the price has gone from $1.02 to $0.13, cents, which is to say about an 87.5% fall a fall of seven eighths in price. So despite solar energy already growing rapidly, this big fall in just the last year has been huge. From 25 cents to 13 cents, and even at this 25 cents threshold, solar energy was already 6% of all of the world's electricity generated, 6%. Now it's about to kick into a higher gear than that. And 6% is not small. That is substantial. So now we go to our next chart to look at that a bit further. This is also a chart from Wikipedia. I wish they had used a white background instead of a black one, but this is the one that they have. Even though photovoltaic modules have existed since 1975, as I'll talk about in part two of this video and my own history with that, there was not any commercially viable photovoltaic electricity until well into the 21st century. We're talking 2007, 2008 was the non-zero part of the graph. That is why a lot of US conservatives, they bash solar because they memorized from both the 1970s as well as from the war on terror years that solar energy is not commercially viable in the time that they memorized, so they think it'll never be viable. Just because something was not possible in 2004 means it'll never be possible, and that is how they think. They think that we about electric cars as well, as I've spoken about in other videos. Because of that exponentially falling price, greater and greater deployment of photovoltaic cells for electricity became possible, and now we have a rapid growth rate, about 24% a year, meaning doubling every three years or so, if you take a moving average, of course, growth rates are higher in years that have a unusually large plunge in price, like has occurred in 2023 and that we are experiencing right now. This regional breakdown is also interesting, but note that North America does generate more photovoltaic power than Europe, despite the amount of money European countries have spent in terms of going toward solar. And Asia, of course, is the highest, with most of this being China, but India is also doing extremely well in solar. Why Africa is doing so poorly in solar is a mystery, because even this little amount that is being generated in Africa is mainly in North Africa, the Arab countries of North Africa, Egypt, Algeria, etc., not in Sub-Saharan Africa, even though that is where the sunlight is the highest. Sub-Saharan Africa should be minting money in photovoltaics, and maybe someday they will, but as of 2024, they still are not, even though other very poor parts of Asia are in fact minting money with photovoltaics. And of course, this was the horizontal axis of calendar year. This vertical axis is terawatt hours generated. And the reason I chose terawatt hours generated is because you can look at your electrical bill and see kilowatt hours that you consumed per month and what the price was per kilowatt hour. And therefore you can calculate based on whatever price you use per kilowatt hour about how many dollars were generated in terms of what you pay or what you estimate the worldwide price to be. Electricity prices vary considerably worldwide. But this is now 1,300 terawatt hours of electricity generated. 
that is 1.3 petawatt hours or 1.3 trillion kilowatt hours. So whatever you're paying per kilowatt hour, multiply that by 1.3 trillion to see how much dollar value of electricity was generated by photovoltaics in 2023. And as we saw, the best is yet to come because solar cells have dropped in price by almost half just in 2023. There is a surplus of supply in the world, which is extremely good news for sunny countries that want to generate more electricity from solar. And that means the solar singularity is upon us. I can state with certainty as a guarantee that by the end of 2029, December 31st, 2029, about 20% of the world's electricity will be generated by photovoltaics. And a disproportionate share of that gain will be in very poor countries as well, giving them a lifeline of economic growth because they have a structural advantage regarding the generation of solar electricity, photovoltaic power, relative to cold weather prosperous countries. So this could be a competitive advantage for the poorest parts of the world, which would be a high multiplier effect. To explore those topics in more detail, we go to part two of this video.